Will we become superhuman soon? With the help of computer chips implanted in our brains. Elon Musk bets on that idea. His company Neuralink was recently granted permission to test such devices on humans. Another future technology in the testing phase are flying cars. Companies worldwide are in a tight race to get their models prepared for the market. When will we be ready to take off? But first, fake reviews on online marketplaces seem to get out of control. What does that mean for us users? A five-star rating is a pretty good reason to buy something online, right? Well, unfortunately, many reviews on Amazon and other online marketplaces are fake. That's bad news for anyone who relies on these ratings. So what's being done against fake reviews and how can you spot them? Fake reviews. Without a doubt, four and five star reviews are clutch for any company wishing to sell their products. And faking those ratings is a welcome tool to trick customers into making bad calls, like buying poor quality products. And the reality? Dodgy and desperate sellers are paying for glowing reviews. And they even commission false negative reviews on competing products. Fake reviews are a huge market and a massive problem for platforms and customers. If you're planning on using TripAdvisor to book your next holiday, take note. The travel site says it identified and removed 1.3 million fake reviews in 2022. And watch out for the army of fakers when shopping online. Fake reviews are produced by millions of click workers all over the world. Only last year, Amazon reported more than 23,000 social media groups worldwide dedicated to writing fake reviews with over 46 million members and followers. Who writes these fake reviews? These reviews have to be convincing, of course. If users recognize fakes, then the seller loses out. That's why these ratings are mostly written by individuals for now and not bots. Fake review brokers target potential writers via social media and especially in Facebook groups. They pay them to write positive reviews after buying a product and returning it. And they offer them outrageous bargains on products if they give them a good rating. Once they've created a network of writers, they offer review packages to online sellers on so-called review farms. To give you a rough idea on how it all works, Prices vary greatly, but you can get a review for as little as two euros. That is indeed not very much if you consider the click workers have to order goods, write their review, and then send it back to get their refund in most cases. Apart from being more than ethically questionable, this also has ecological consequences. Unwanted goods are being shipped around the world only to potentially get destroyed after being returned. Online sellers who want a bigger impact on their overall rating mostly buy review packages. We found an offer for a pack of 100 positive reviews for 180 euros. This amount of top ratings can significantly improve a product's overall user score and thus make it more visible in online searches. This leads to market distortion and makes it extremely difficult for consumers to compare products online. And these writers are pretty good at their job too. It's fairly hard to spot fake reviews. Most brokers ask their writers to browse organically by clicking on related products, marking other reviews as helpful, adding photos and videos, and writing reviews of 300 words or more. And what's worse, legally, review farms are acting in a gray area. In most countries, there's no framework that makes the buying, selling, and placing of fake reviews subject to criminal enforcement. How can AI help? Amazon, the world's biggest online retailer, claims it is doubling down on its efforts to tackle the problem. And in order to do this, they say they have improved their AI tools. Amazon's detective AI does what it does best. It analyzes the data and then offers conclusions. The AI will look at the review writer's relationship with other online accounts, their sign-in activity, review history, and any unusual behavior. Thanks to the detective AI, Amazon says it was able to block over 200 million suspected fake reviews last year. Still, consumer organizations argue online retailers are not doing enough and that joint efforts between governments and private stakeholders are needed on an international level. How can you spot fake reviews? The overwhelming majority of these fakes are either five-star or one-star reviews so you're more likely to find legitimate reviews in the middle. Sneaky fake reviewers might also award four stars rather than the full five, but no one is paying for two or three star reviews. Apart from that, these red flags to spot a fake review have proven efficient in the past. Reviews are rather vague and not very detailed. Generic titles like great product or awesome are common in fakes. 
Competitors' products are mentioned. Many fake reviews have similar wording, as well as spelling or grammar mistakes. One star reviews that mention small flaws, which really aren't that bad. Have you ever bought a dodgy product with high ratings? Or are you more skeptical when a product gets high praise on online marketplaces? Let us know. A paralyzed man can walk again, thanks to a revolutionary chip in his brain. What else could be possible with brain-computer interfaces, or short BCIs? Typing mails only using your thoughts? Or even save your memories and replay them at any time? Well, some of this is already possible. And if you ask Elon Musk, the sky's the limit. His startup Neuralink has recently been cleared to test their brain chips on, or more accurately, in humans. But how do these devices even work? To put it simply, BCIs are connected to your brain, either from outside or inside your skull. Electrodes communicate with the neurons in your brain and monitor their signals. These signals are then processed by an algorithm and turned into commands. In other words, the BCI translates your thoughts. With a chip like that, you can, for example, operate computers or smartphones, you could play video games or prepare a presentation for work without using your hands. Or imagine a conversation without speaking and instead communicating by reading each other's thoughts. And these devices could also monitor your health and warn you of the risk of a heart attack, for example. If you think this sounds like science fiction, you're not entirely wrong. Everyday uses of BCIs like these are still up in the air. However, they are not too far-fetched for today's tech. In the medical field, brain-computer interfaces are already tested on humans with great success. BCIs helping people with disabilities. Being able to use a computer could be a real game changer for paralyzed people. Recently, researchers from Switzerland even made it possible for a paralyzed man to walk again. They implanted two devices into the patient's body, one in the head and the other one on his spinal cord. These implants communicate wirelessly. The patient's movement intentions are picked up by the brain device and then decoded in real time through algorithms based on adaptive artificial intelligence. The intentions are then converted into electrical stimulation of the spinal cord. This activates the leg muscles, which then move. The device allows this man to stand, walk and even climb stairs again. How else could this tech be used? If it's possible to decode signals from the brain, then the other direction is also thinkable. Stimulating the brain with external commands can create even more applications. This method is called deep brain stimulation. For example, Neuralink is exploring tech to make blind people see again. Signals of a camera could be converted into stimulation to allow blind people to get a picture of their surroundings. Using BCIs, researchers can potentially also recognize signals of epileptic seizures and in turn sense stimulation to prevent them. There are also high hopes when it comes to treating neurological conditions such as depression, schizophrenia or addiction. However, there are some concerns when it comes to BCIs. The procedure of implanting a chip into your brain bears the risk of severely damaging it. Translating thoughts also raises questions about data safety. How and where is data recorded from your brain stored? And what could tech companies do with it? Just imagine targeted ads based on your private thoughts. Would you let Elon Musk into your brain? Let us know. Have you ever been stuck in traffic and wish you could just fly off? Many people are working on making that fantasy a reality. A startup from India is developing a flying taxi. A Brazilian company aims to launch their model by 2026. A German startup wants to ferry people at the Paris Olympics next year. And a SpaceX-backed company has been granted permission to test flights with what they call the first fully functional flying car. So, who will be the first to be ready for takeoff? Remember? The Back to the Future movies envisioned flying cars by 2015. Well, it's about time to invent them, don't you think? But are flying cars really the future? What does this all mean for average car drivers? And aren't the vehicles that are being developed just hyped up helicopters? Let's break it down. Several air taxi companies are targeting 2024 or 2025 to start their operations. The Vertical Flight Society estimates that there are over 700 different designs for electric vertical takeoff and landing aircrafts, or EV tolls, from nearly 350 companies worldwide. 
how exactly air taxis will be integrated into our cities is still a work in progress. So far, no manufacturer has received permission to operate. Designs, of course, vary from company to company. Some have wings, some don't and others are even supposed to fly and roam the streets. This concept by a SpaceX-backed startup just got approved for test flights in the US. However, what they all have in common is using rotors to lift them off the ground. Fair enough, but why not just use an already existing helicopter? Let's take a look at the advantages of EV tolls. Urban helicopter services like Blade have already been in use for quite some time. While these are mostly for the super rich, EV tolls are seen as more suitable for the masses. Here's why. Other than helicopters, which run on fuel, most flying cars operate with electric motors. These are cheaper to operate and maintain, which brings the price down for customers. EV tolls are also quieter than helicopters and thus more suitable for flying in urban areas. And because they don't emit carbon dioxide, they are more eco-friendly. In places like New York City or Hanoi, they could help to minimize traffic congestion. This reduces emissions and makes urban travel smoother. So I guess the only question that's left is, will I be able to use flying cars? Well, that depends. To get a personal flying car in the next few years is highly unlikely, unless you've got a hundred grand lying around. A Swedish startup almost sold out their entire pre-sale inventory of EV tolls to customers all over the world at a price of around 90,000 euro per piece. The company expects to deliver the vehicles by 2024. But air taxi services might be within reach for more people. Different companies are projecting the price to be between 2 and 10 euros per kilometer. However, experts warn that these projections might be unrealistic due to high production costs. The number of flights and passengers would need to be consistently high. And then there's some doubt if flying cars are really eco-friendly. Setting up the necessary infrastructure for takeoff and landing could consume huge amounts of resources. And the vehicles would have to run only on green energy to make them sustainable. But I for one would love to use an air taxi instead of being stuck in traffic. What about you? That's it from me. Which topic did you find most interesting? Let us know. I hope you enjoyed this episode. See you soon.